We have hellish commutes that seem to be getting worse. And I think it's important to start with where we are as an island in terms of our, our bus transportation. Uh, it's not just a route, it's all over the place. There are issues with just about every route all across the island. And if you think about it, these routes are 40 and 50 plus years old. They're the only game in town, really. I mean, this, the Staten Island Railway runs along our uh, spine of our eastern shore, but buses are the only option. Um, we have 51 bus routes on Staten Island, 31 express bus routes, 20 local routes. You have 94, 95,000 people on average take our express bus, around 35,000 on average take our uh, local routes every given day. This, this is mass transit on Staten Island. And again, think about anything that's 40 or 50 years old. Think about the improvements in technology. Think about the improvements in cars and televisions and in everything. And then think about that we have essentially routes that were established 40 and 50 years ago. And neighborhoods have grown, traffic patterns uh, and demographics have changed. We haven't caught up with the times. What's the 442 got to offer besides all-around good looks? Plenty. We're very dependent if you need public transportation to, uh, to, to deal with the, uh, the bus operations. And it's a, it's a very inequitable uh, system compared to uh, the subway system. Uh, but honestly, uh, uh, for the moment, it's the, the best that we've got getting from one point to the other often can't be accomplished on a relatively straight line. The distances are just uh, too great and the time is just too great for inter-island transfers. Whereas if you're, you know, a straight line would get you there in eight minutes, you know, you can end up with an hour commute or, or longer. The, the struggle to get Staten Island from a car-centric borough to one that is a little bit more willing to give up our car keys to use mass transit is a difficult one. I mean, it's sort of bred in who we are, and it's bred out of survival. This is all we've, we've known. I think we will never get Staten Islanders to use mass transit until there is an efficient reliable system. The street network is not as much of a grid as uh, the other boroughs. There's a limited number of arterial roads and those roads get jammed with traffic. Uh, you have the Green Belt, which is one of Staten Island's best assets, but it's also a challenge because those east-west bus services, uh, there's limited roads to take them on. Uh, so it can be a challenge getting people from one end of the island to the other. Uh, and so th those are two of the biggest challenges that we deal with. This is always going to be a difficult commute given our infrastructure. But I think because of that infrastructure, it's even more important that we're efficient with these routes. The bus time system, which allows you to know exactly where the bus is before you leave your house, uh, was a great improvement that we were able to bring to the island first. Uh, but uh, you know, this, the next piece of that problem is the time that it takes uh, to you know go from one community to inevitably St. George to get you off the island, or to make the transfer to get you up to uh, you know some other within the island uh, destination. We have a lot of data now um, about performance, about running times, about ridership that's on a daily basis that we have not had in the past. You know, we rely on manual counts and so having this data allows us to understand a lot more than we ever have about exactly what's happening with our buses and hopefully to identify areas where we can improve them and ways to do that. Tonight we have people at tables there. They've got big maps rolled out in front of them. Our staff are taking notes on everything they say. So we're, we're asking them uh, some simple questions like where they come from, where they go to, uh, asking them things about where are areas they want to go to that they find challenging, where are areas that they feel the bus performs particularly bad, um, and then asking them some questions about uh, different topics like bus stop spacing, 
are bus stops spaced too close? Are they too far apart? If the bus stops were spaced farther apart and you had to walk a little further, would you be willing to do that if your ride was quicker and more reliable? Uh, so some hypothetical kind of trade-off scenarios. Many of the questions with planning bus service are trade-offs, and there's not necessarily a right or wrong answer, uh, but it can be what, what people prefer and what they find best for them. Um, the routes are too long. There are too many stops. There are too many buses stopping at the same locations, leading to bunching. These things are, are controllable and manageable. I don't believe this is a study that you know is going to be put on a shelf and, and won't be acted on. I, I think this is one that will have tangible results. <laughs>